Hello everybody. We keep talking about chess calculation. In this video, I will show you a fundamental part of chess calculation. And at the end of it, you will see how chess resembles science and why chess is a game or sport like boxing or tennis, where your opponent has a fundamental role in this game. Okay, recently I have published a chessable course that is called Fundamental Chess Calculation Skills. I will post a link here in this video. Please check that course out for further information and to dig deeper in that fundamental area of chess folks. Today, I will show you very instructive examples to highlight the role of the opponent when you calculate in chess. It's black to move here, folks. Let me illustrate this with this example. It's black to play in this position. And I'm sure most of you have spotted a nice looking resource for black that is totally about making use of this advanced pawn on h3. Let's imagine that in the actual game, you noticed this candidate move bishop h4. And you get excited, right? Because if white takes, then you will push your G pawn. And after it takes, you will push H2 and you will win this game. Now, many of us would get excited and would go ahead and make that move without proper analysis, without actively searching for the best reply by the opponent against our good looking move, Bishop H4. Visual thinking would kick in, right? Psychologically, it will be difficult for most of you to reject this move, to actively search like a scientist for counter evidence. Folks, bishop h4 is not a good move because after that, white will take, and after g3, white will not take your pawn, but white will go knight f3. And congratulations if you spotted knight f3 from the initial position. That's what I mean by the opponent resources. That's what I mean by chess resembles science. So going back in this position, it takes a real skill to even notice bishop h4 is a candidate move, right? That's a pattern that is worth knowing because of the advanced pass pawn. And masters, they notice those candidates instantly. But masters are great at looking at the opponent's best reply against their candidates, almost like a scientist. They are seeking for counter evidence from the world before they accept their hypothesis. Their hypothesis, of course, is their candidate moves. Masters spend a long time to find active moves by the opponent and they don't go for wishful thinking because this will wishful thinking if you only looked at h6 g3 because of course, right, black is winning in this line directly. But it takes a real skill for people to notice the opponent's candidate moves on the second move in this case of knight f3 and suddenly your pawns are stopped, right? And if you push the pawn, that knight is actually covering that promotion square. So going back, bishop h4 looks like a beautiful candidate, but it does not work. In my course, you'll be trained particularly for the skill of actively searching for the best move by the opponent. Another example, folks. I want you to stop the video. It's black to play right now. And can you please tell me whether black can take that pawn on e5? Please go through this process of actively searching for the best reply by the opponent against queen takes e5. Folks, congratulations if you actually went for queen takes e5. Which move must be seen for black before you took it? Obviously f3, right? You must have seen this resource by white before you grab that pawn. But should we stop here? Or did you spot black's next move? You're a great player if you actually spotted queen g3 from the initial position and suddenly that pawn is pinned because there's a hanging queen on d3 and black won a pawn for nothing. That knight cannot be captured. Plus the queen is eyeing the f2 square. Black also is a beautiful position, plus the pawn on e5. You see, three ply calculation, short calculation, that's exactly what you will be training in my course on chessable, right? But you have everything in this short line. First of all, obviously you want to grab a pawn, that's a good candidate. But before you grab it, 
you're actively searching for the forcing moves and the strongest moves by the opponent but you don't shy away just because you solve this move you don't shy away from that move you try to go one move deeper right one move deeper and once you do it you notice new resources new possibilities and new patterns and this means you can go ahead and grab the pawn short calculation in chess short but accurate calculation is more important than long and obscure calculation and masters are great in calculating short lines accurately just like here right three ply calculation and you will be training this specifically in this course on chessable another instructive position folks well if you look at the black pieces they are in a beautiful harmony the white king is almost going to get mated just look at the effect of these pawns on the white king the only move for white was e4 which happened in the actual game and here it's black to play folks i want you to stop the video and find the best move for black and please avoid visual thinking in this case folks it's a beautiful position because most of us would see this move rook c2 immediately and a visual thinking would kick in and if you only wish that wife will take your rook then you're okay then you're successful right black is winning what is the problem the problem is that after rook c2 check white doesn't need to take and the king obviously will go to e3 putting pressure on your pawn and the rooks are eyeing each other and suddenly white survives white is having a fine game incredible black slips here because black only hopes and wishes that they will take your rook on c2 and you'll make a queen on the next move beautiful short but incorrect line for black because black only assumes this recapture from white black refuses to actively search for the best resource for the opponent against the move like a scientist right going back after e4 what should black do obviously there should be something better for black right because the king is almost going to get mated look at those pieces and here i want you to take a step back and look for alternatives on the very first move candidate moves please generate a great candidate move for black that puts white in a zugzwang basically you're a great player folks if you came up with the quiet move rook e1 it's a beautiful move it's totally about the opponent's resources because by going e4 white king created that e3 square and that was white's plan right black is cutting off the king and plus obviously right what is the threat the threat is rook f1 mate and can white survive no there is no defense right just look at the white king just look at the white rooks clumsy right look at the pawns that are burying the black white pieces here rook e1 is a lovely beautiful candidate for black and once you see it right it's difficult to unsee it it's so powerful and white resigns white is nothing else i mean the only try is this but there are so many moves for for, for black to win the simplest is i take and i take your rook on b2 and i win this game right so going back my question is this after moves like this obviously you should look at this resource king e3 that's what white wants and it will be a terrible blunder to do this move and only hoping for takes instead we should become like a scientist what are the alternatives can we generate more candidate moves and also it's about the opponent's resources right like can i also hinder my opponent from reaching its plan and that's how you spot this candidate follow with, with of course with some you know mating patterns like this and white is totally paralyzed so this position is also great again short but accurate calculation right the line is extremely short it's only about seeing this resource it's only about giving yourself a choice on the very first move and spot this strong looking rookie one while avoiding pitfalls of wishful thinking and blunder with rook c2 and in my chessable course again guys you'll be trained specifically on this search for several candidates on the very first move instead of choosing one move and go like 25 moves deep in that line you will learn you will train to take a step back and give yourself choices and discover strong resources just like rook e1 is in this case which is the cleanest finish for black in his position there's beauty in such short and precise and accurate calculations i may leave you folks with this homework position 
white in this position has an extra pawn and if all goes well white should win this position pawn and games are so tricky it's about precise calculations you should be so accurate so my question is should white go b3 or b4 in this position if i give you two choices do you go b3 or b4 white's goal is to create a pass pawn on the queen side right to be able to win this position so it looks very logical for white to go b3 what can be wrong with this move for example or what can be wrong with this move b4 i want you to be like become like a scientist in this case actively search for the best reply by the opponent against those moves and then you will discover the right solution as a scientist this part of chess calculation has a very special role personally for me because i think this is where chess resembles science and the scientific method the most right just because a move looks good to you it doesn't mean that you should play it you should go through the scientific process first in trying to find the best resource for your opponent that could potentially falsify your idea right that's why chess is a beautiful game it can teach us so many great such great fundamental skills critical thinking scientific method and so on i hope you like this video folks if you do, did that please give me a like and subscribe and please check my chessable course i will post a link here on this video to train those fundamental processes in your games and please give me feedback on youtube and i'm waiting for your responses for this homework position bye bye